50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Welcome to Pripyat. I kind of thought I would knew how I'd feel when I came to the town of Pripyat, seeing it so many times on TV and TV series and stuff. But you're still, when you come here, you're kind of unprepared for just the weirdness, the creepiness of just these big abandoned buildings rotting away. Can you imagine the lives that went on there before? When the accident happened at Chernobyl, the people were told, pack your bags, but just take enough for three days. You'll be back in three days. And so the people came out of their apartments with one suitcase. That was all they were allowed, just one suitcase. Of course, they never returned. They left their belongings behind, never to come back. This is the old town square, the house of culture. Over there's the old town restaurant. And so when you often see pictures of life here in this town of Pripyat before the disaster, this is normally what you see here. It was a typical Soviet town. Here on the corner of the square is the old Soviet telephone boxes. You can imagine in the past, people would have come here, used what was the telephone then, and like looked out over this. It would have looked so different. Would have been life, people pushing prams, cars driving past, people coming out the restaurant, going into the house of culture to get married, staying in the hotel, maybe even some tourists or something. No one could have imagined when these telephone boxes were put there that this devastation would be what would one day appear. So I've just in, stepped inside of what was a music shop. Here's the counter where the work women would have worked and served the people. And if we look behind here, you'll see what they were selling. The old pianos here for people to have in their houses. Learning the piano is very popular in the Soviet Union. And here in fact on the piano, it says made in the USSR. Here we have another shot. Wow, there's a TV here. An old Soviet TV, I presume. Oh, wow, look. So this was obviously an electronic shop that sold TVs and all kinds of products. Look, still here. Really brings home to you just what life was like here, how normal it was here in Chernobyl and Pripyat before the accident took place. Wow. This is the old sports hall of the school. Wow, look at the floor, how it's just rotten away. The old parquet floor. Basketballs. Old Soviet basketball. And look here at the end. Oh, the floor's so mushy. But here at the end is a little podium where the little children of Pripyat would stand when they won their prizes. First, second, third. Receive, to receive their medals. Can you imagine them playing here? Back in the day. I just found a book in the library, which is basically an English language book, a textbook for what little Soviet kids would have learned back in the day. How to join the Komsomol or an excursion to a factory. At 14, boys and girls join the Komsomol. Many of them are very active in their Komsomol organization. There you go, joining the Komsomol. Very useful for a Soviet child visiting England one day. Here we have the, if you look here, it's the, 
the flag of the Soviet Union, the emblem, and then the Soviet national anthem. And here we have, because this was of course once Soviet Ukraine, the Soviet Ukrainian flag, the blue representing the Black Sea, and then in Ukrainian language, the hymn of the Soviet of the Soviet Ukrainian Republic. Wow, time stood still here in Pripyat. In this classroom was where they taught. Well, all Soviet children, especially the boys, they learned about warfare. And so this was a class where they would come and learn how to shoot Kalashnikovs, learn about different types of bullets, learn about rockets. Oh my God. Learn about the strategy of war. Up here we have a class, what they were teaching them in school in the Soviet times about how to put on your gas mask in case of a nuclear attack or something by us in the West. But what they didn't realize was that when they used their gas mask, it wasn't be us that was causing it, it would be them themselves, the mistakes that the Soviets made themselves. And so we've left the town of Pripyat and now we're going to head to this village which is about 20 kilometers down this road into the forest called Kupavate and we're going to end our journey by uh, meeting another resettler a babushka who lives in the village Oh, let me just show you something first before we meet the babushka which is this the old post boxes, look, for the people in the villages, the postman would have come, dropped the um, post in there, the letters, so you can see the number of people before that were living in the village, and now of course they're just empty and not used. Not many people here receiving posts anymore. Whoa, Chernobyl party. We've come here to visit the Babushka, who lives now. An abandoned village, really, here in the zone. Look at a little wooden house, how sweet. A real Russian izba. And we brought her some goodies. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Спасибо вам большое. О, отлично. Спасибо вам большое за приглашение. Ах, ты не переворачиваешься. Вот, сделала. О, вау. Так много. Huh? Так много. Uh, uh, right. Голодное. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm taking it through. Ой, здравствуйте. Где я буду положить, yes? Okay, she's there. Okay. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Okay. Uh, this is uh, her sister invalid, always uh, from uh, childness, I guess. I see, uh, I see. Like she was born like this. Uh, yeah. Wow. Babushka just brought in a bottle of Samagon moonshine, moonshine um, that she's made herself here in the Chernobyl zone. So I think um, we're going to have a little, <laughs> a little tipple of Samagon and some salad that we have over there, some pig's fat. And um, yeah, wow. I'm a little bit scared. I have a feeling this is gonna be some strong stuff. But um, let's try it, a summer bomb. Oi. У меня есть ощущение, что это очень крепкий. Да, паспитаете. Воспитаете. Итак. А вы так мало? <laughs> 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 <la
Wow, fire water. Wow. Бабушка, у меня есть вопрос для вас, если вы не против. Почему вы решили возвращаться в ваш дом, в ваш деревню? Почему? А вы, вы, мною заметили свою матку? Свою матку мною заметили? Нет. Родина какая? Я тут мой пуп закопали, значит, я решила родина. И мое дома кладбище. Мало наварила картошку, а тут Коля приехал с одними. Ну, ты на коня. Ah, for the horse, on the horse. The last one of the day. Wow. И счастливо я вам пути. С Богом, чтобы замыкаться уже. Well, that's our time in the zone has come to an end. But before we do, I have to pass through this. The radiation detector. Alright. If I'm clean of radiation, this gate will open. Let's see. If I get hands up here. Чисто. I'm completely. Ой, I'm broken. I'm completely free of radiation. Now his eagle is now. Is he clean? So we've just left the Chernobyl zone, and um, yeah, I leave with mixed feelings. You know, on the one hand, it's a fascinating place to see it and to see the old Soviet town of Pripyat and how it was. And on the other hand, of course, there's a lot of sadness when you think about what that disaster is meant for Ukraine, what it's meant for Belarus and for parts of Russia, and for the people who inhabited this region, people who now are living lonely lives, really, many of them, um, in these desolate, deserted villages, places where they grew up. They never expected, I doubt, their lives to end like this. You know, far from anyone. All right, guys, until next time, have a Merry Christmas and a great New Year. Bye bye.